Jesus Christ, what a joy, privilege, and honor it is to be with you once again today. My name is Pastor Steve Blanchard, and I have pastored three churches for over 33 years. In one of those churches, we had a full-fledged, wonderful, and powerful Bible college that we were able to distribute to hundreds and thousands. Today, I want to continue in bringing forth one of those classes entitled Survey of the Bible. After 33 years of pastoring full-time, I've noticed that many of the beautiful saints have pieces of a puzzle with all of the time they've been in church gatherings. What I want to do in this one Bible college class is to bring a three-hour per session class and reduce it down to around 30 minutes. My prayer and hope is that it would bring the pieces of this beautiful Bible, the pieces, and bring this to a full, beautiful puzzle tapestry that you and I have the full scope of God's beautiful word, 66 books of the Bible, and once again, we are endeavoring to bring a short summary on each and every single book, 30 minutes or less. I pray that God would continue to give you a hunger, give you a thirst, a desire for more of Him and more of His precious word. Now, we're going to move quickly, so let's pray together. Father, again, I thank you so much for the honor and the privilege of uh, sharing the beautiful gospel of good news. I would pray, Lord, that your powerful word would be planted in every single heart and life that watches and or listens. One day at one time, I thank you in advance for them. May they flourish, may you anoint them, and may they bring forth, yea, even a thousand times more. In the name above all names, Jesus Christ, amen. Beloved, this is session number six, and it is in the book called Deuteronomy. And again, we shall move fast, and feel free to listen to them over and over until you fully have the engrafted word that will save you, the Bible declares. The book of Deuteronomy. Beloved, uh, I have a quiz uh, that I wanted to quickly uh, move before we get into that beautiful book, uh, a quiz uh, for those that have been following and listening and, uh, and learning. We gave you uh, a, an assignment that you would learn the 66 books of the Bible and to memorize each of them. So if you were in my class or the Bible college, you would have a time where you would have to write out all of the 66 books of the Bible. So uh, keep that in terms of what is, uh, is asked of you. Number two on the quiz. How did the name Israelites come into existence? So when you hear of Israelites or read them in your Bible, how did that name come into existence? 
The answer is that that, is, uh, that name Israelites was given to the 12 tribes of uh, the 12 sons of Jacob who became 12 tribes. And God called the 12 tribes Israel, thus Israelites. So that name Israel or Israelites came in reference to the 12 sons of Jacob that grew into 12 individual tribes and God called them the Israelites. Number three, how long were the Israelites uh, uh, enslaved in Egypt for? Give you one second. The answer is 430 years. Who did God choose to deliver them to bring forth emancipation from their tyranny of slavery? It was Moses. Very good. I heard someone shout it way, way far away. Uh, number four, who was the first person God chose to bring the covenants of Israel through? Who was the first person that God chose to bring forth the covenants of Israel through? Abraham was his name. What was the name of the rectangular shaped object God told Moses to build for him that he might dwell therein? What was the name of that rectangular box, as it were, that structure? The tabernacle, excellent. Can you name one of the articles within that tabernacle? Can you name one of them? I'll name them quickly again. You had the brazen altar as you came in. Then you had the brazen laver. And then you came through the holy place. You had the mezuzah. Then you had the uh, table of showbread. Then you had the altar of incense. And as you went into the holy of holies, there was the ark of the covenant where God would manifest himself. And the last question for today, what was the tribe, the tribe's name, where God declared that the priests would come through? What was the tribe's name that God declared that only the priestly ministry would come through? The answer is Levi, the tribe of Levi. Very good, beloved. Let's move quickly. Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, the actual Hebrew uh, name is Hadarim, Hadarim. Deuteronomy means in the Hebrew, the words. It means the book of remembrance. God was wanting the children of Israel. They had journeyed 40 years in the desert of Sinai and, and, and did a complete circle. They started at Kadesh Barnea and God had a promised land for them only 11 days away. And yet as he tested them and tried to refine them, yea, humble them, and begin to get Egypt out of them, the Bible says that God took them in a full circle and for 40 years they came back to the very same place they started. And God wanted those, uh, uh, the new generation that continued to come up, he wanted them to remember his marvelous miracles, his love, his kindness, all of the things that he had done. The forefathers that were 20 years and older passed away in that uh, Sinai desert and God was bringing a new generation, the Joshua generation, into Canaan, into the promised land. The book of Deuteronomy was a book of remembrance. God again wanting that new generation, that Joshua generation, listen, that was born in the desert, wanting them to remember the great things God has done. Let me quickly pause and ask you, do you know and remember all of the great things and the mighty things, the kind things God has done for you? My experience has been often many of the Christians only remember what God has done today and they don't have the book of remembrance of what God has already accomplished and done in your life. If you are having trouble trying to remember what God has done for you, let me ask you, has he brought forth the grace that you now are born again and you are saved? Beloved, that should be enough for you to serve him, worship him, and love him all all of the days of your life. Friends and family often forget and uh, do not remember the, the things you and I have done for them over the years. But listen, beloved, God does remember and he wants you and I to remember as well. 2 Peter 1.12, Peter said, Wherefore I will not be negligent, 
to put you always in remembrance and to remind you of the things, even though you know these things, that you might be established in present truth. Peter understood that you and I need to be reminded over and over and over, even though we know them. But he said, I want to remind you again, remember all that God has done for you. Deuteronomy was the life and the heart behind the law given uh, in the book of Leviticus. God wanted the life and the heart um, to be uh, underscored with this book called Deuteronomy. The author is Moses. It was written approximately 1405 BC and the location was outside of Canaan on the plains and, and hills of Moab. The summary of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses the leader who was uh, raised in the, uh, uh, the confines of Egypt for 40 years, then sent out into the desert of Midian for 40 years where he tended sheep on the backside of the desert and met his wife Zipporah. His father-in-law Jethro taught him how to shepherd sheep that brought him the next 40 years taking this generation through the desert of Sinai and bringing Bring them right on the brink again of going into the promised land. This is the scope and the summary where Moses had his last days and his last words there before he handed the baton to Joshua to take that generation into the promised land. Chapters 1 through 4, it speaks of, uh, of looking backward of all of the things God had done. Chapters 12 through 26 is what God expected of Israel going into the promised land. In chapters 27 through 34, what God is going to do for them. Again, culminating in Moses being called by God to Mount Nebo. I've been to Mount Nebo many times. And you could see from that mountain all the, the beauty of Canaan, the beauty of the promised land. God brought him up to the mountain of Nebo by himself and declared no one will ever find his grave site. No one will ever find his burial site. And as Moses looked back where they had come from, he looked forward to that which he had one day longed to be. And beloved, on his last closing breath, he looked up and God called him home. That's a good model for you and I. You could look back and see the great things God has done for you and brought you through, you can look forward to the promised lands that he has for you, but don't forget to look up for your redemption draws nearer and nearer. Did you know, beloved, Jesus quoted the book of Deuteronomy 23 times. While he was being tempted by Satan in the wilderness, he quoted the book of Deuteronomy. He quoted it in Luke 4, 8 and Deuteronomy 10, 20. When Satan said, why don't you worship me? Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You shall worship the Lord God in him only and him only shall you serve. The more you worship him, the greater servant you're going to become. Worship precedes servanthood. Jesus said Again, it, 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 he is the only one we are to worship, and he is the one we will serve. Worship always precedes pure service to him. Matthew 4, 4, Deuteronomy 8, 3, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He was again quoting the book of Deuteronomy. And if Jesus Christ believed in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, you and I too would do well to learn this beautiful book and all of them within your Bible. Five major pronouncements that came from the book of Deuteronomy. Number one, Deuteronomy 6.4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. And listen now, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. 
You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you wake up and rise up. Listen, you shall bind them on as a sign on your hand and on the frontlets of your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. This major pronouncement of one of many that I'll bring to you today, uh, again, is declaring that you and I understand that love is the greatest agency that God has brought forth to allure you and I to Him. For God so loved the world, agape, the deep sacrificial love that He sent forth His Son, Jesus Christ. He said again, Deuteronomy 6, 4, Love the Lord God with all of your heart, all of your soul and all of your strength. He said again, love is the greatest motivator over uh, and loving and, and, and love is and serving him. It's, it's much more powerful than uh, a fear. It's much more powerful than discipline, much more powerful than rewards. Um, again, beloved, love is the motivating engine of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He again underlined wanting you and I. To have a generational legacy. Teach your children. Sit and talk with them. Bedtime, breakfast, car, and school. Make it a point to endeavor to bring this into the seedbed of your child's heart. The second major pronouncement. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 23. God declared to the Israelites. I brought you out from Egypt that I might bring you in. To give you a land which I swore to your forefathers. Beloved, I want you to see that if God is bringing you out of something, he has a place to bring you into. He said, I brought you out of slavery, of bondage, of sins. And I have a place I want to bring you into, a promised land. Many Christians that I was able to, uh, again, pastor and even in itinerant ministry, they seem to be stuck in the middle. Not fully out of the world, out of Egypt yet, uh, and yet halfway into the kingdom of God, of relationship with Jesus Christ. And God does not want you and I to be stuck. He has called you out. Ecclesia is the Greek name for the church. Ek, called out ones from the world that you and I live in. You have been called out and he doesn't want you stuck in the middle. Isaiah 66, 9, shall I bring you to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord God. Isaiah 37, 3, this is the day of trouble, Isaiah said. Why? The children of Israel have come to birth, but they have no strength to bring forth that baby, that child. It's a miscarriage. Many watching, listening to me, you know God has birthed things within you. He has placed dreams and visions and desires and promised lands. And you and I again want to make sure you are filled up with the joy and the strength of God's uh, word so you can bring forth all of those desires to birth. Isaiah 26, 18. We have been with child, and yes, with pain, and we brought forth, we brought forth a, a wind. We've not brought forth any deliverance to the world. Again, God has, uh, has brought you out, and he wants to bring you into that promised land. Proclamation, pronouncement number three, Deuteronomy 7.7. 7. For the Lord did not set his, listen, set his love on you, say your name, nor choose you because you are more than number than any of the, of the peoples on the earth. For you were the least of all peoples, he said. But because, why? Why did he chose you? Because he loves you. He didn't need a reason. He doesn't need a reason to love you. He is love. He is holy. But he chose you. Why? Because he loves you. Not because you were the best speaker, the best minister, the best deliverance person, the best this, the best that. He said, I chose you not because of anything you do or have done. I have chose you because I love you. God loves you, beloved. The fourth major pronouncement, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. God declares, and now Israel, what does the Lord require of you? Listen, what does the Lord require of you? 
but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God, listen, with all of your heart and with all of your soul, and to keep His commandments of the Lord and His statutes which I have commanded you this day for good. Notice, beloved, often and most often times in your Bible, when there is promises that God is giving to you and I, there are conditions, aren't there? There are conditions. There are conditions for answers, conditions for blessings, conditions for God to lead you. And he says this, what does the Lord require of you and I? One, to have a reverence for him, a fear for him. The New Testament speaks of a a godly fear unto him, a godly reverence to him. He said also, number two, I want you to walk in my ways. Walk in my ways. The Bible says that Israel knew God's miracles and his acts, but only Moses knew his ways. Only Moses knew his ways. I saw a young little boy talking to his dad and his dad asked him a question in terms of how should you do this and what should you have done. And the boy shared exactly what the father had instructed him. The boy, the little young son knew the father's ways. And as you and I get to know him and get to know not just his acts, but get to know his ways, you and I will begin to have deeper fellowship with him. Walk in my, what does the Lord require of you to have a reverence for him? To walk in his ways, number three, to love him with all of your heart. Not just part of it, beloved. Not just a measure of it, not just most of it, but all. He said, I must be preeminent in all things. God, the Bible declares, is a jealous God. Listen, and the Bible says, and he's envious of other lovers you and I have. When you and I are already looking to see when the soccer games are happening and and what time and where and this and that. I had people in church that actually would uh, begin to look and see their phone and see who's winning the soccer games across the world. Truly, there's other lovers within that heart, okay? God wants all of you, not just a portion of you. What does the Lord require of you? Number four, to serve the Lord with all of your heart and with all of your soul. God will show you first and foremost how to love him and to worship him. And the byproduct is you and I will serve him each and every day as you arise from that bed. And number five, to keep his commandments. Beloved, over and over and over, the Lord says, are you going to obey? Are you going to be obedient to my word? And the last uh, proclamation, the last major announcement, beloved, I could have had a hundred of these in here. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. He said, and you shall remember that the Lord God led you all of these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He said, I I have have brought you through um, this uh, 40 years uh, uh, and this wandering in the wilderness. How come to humble you? God could not allow a, a prideful people to come into a promised land and actually to establish what God would declare to be his image, his kingdom, his representation. Israel, listen, was to be the representation to all of the other nations and to cause jealousy where they would be provoked to come unto the only real true living God Yahweh himself and he needs to have a humble people not just intellectually but experientially where you and I would come through so much trouble and trauma and travail and what is necessary we have become a humble people and can be given a promised land to represent the Lord Jesus Christ again himself. He would humble you and I. He said, I will test you in the life that you are living. Why would God need to test me? Because beloved of faith, listen, that can't be tested, can't be trusted. Every generation will be tested by God to test their faith. 
to test their obedience, to test their love. A faith that can't be tested can be trusted. In Revelation chapter 20 verse 7, after the 30 year millennium, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ on the earth, the Bible says that God will loose Satan and his demons for a little season why? To test that generation that is remaining upon the earth during that time. God will test every single generation for a faith that can't be tested. What? Cannot be trusted. Cannot be trusted. He said also, will you keep God's word regardless of circumstances? Will you keep his word regardless of circumstances? And beloved, God continues to bring that before his church regardless of what's happening around you. Will you hold true to the obedience of God's word, to the testimony of your words and mine, and bring glory to him all of the days of your life? After that 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, and those that were 20 years and above that were emancipated out of Egypt, they perished in the wilderness, and here they were, full circle, back at the starting point called Kadesh Barnea. God told uh, Moses, come to Mount Nebo, and I'm going to, again, call you home now. You have been a faithful, the Bible says, a faithful priest, a faithful prophet, and a faithful pastor. And he, Moses walked up Mount Nebo by himself, and he looked again, he looked back of all of that which God had brought him through Egypt. He looked forward to the promised land that he so desired to uh, come into, and then he looked up and God called him home. The Bible declares that that baton was then handed to Joshua. And he and Caleb brought this Joshua generation, a company of uh, 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 children, as it were, many born in the desert, and brought them to Canaan, the land of promise. And you and I, when we get together in our next session, you will begin to see and to uh, beautifully uh, understand the wonderful work that God had done and what God was going to do in this new Joshua generation in a promised land. Beloved, I think I did it today. I got this finished in 30 minutes or less or real close. Of course, there's much in this Bible. This was a three-hour lecture, a three-hour class in our Bible college. But I believe it's enough for you and I to cause you to be hungry and to go and to read the beautiful book of Deuteronomy. Remember, Jesus quoted Deuteronomy 23 times. And if he again believed in the Old Testament and found value in it, that he spoke to Satan about it and he preached from it over and over and over again, I want to suggest to you and I, it as well as all of God's beautiful written word is worthy of study, is worthy of time, it is worthy of investment, for that truly shall bring forth great rewards for you and I. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you in the name above all names, Jesus Christ. You said every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior. And I would pray by your Holy Spirit and by your grace and mercy that you would call us fully out of the world system and bring us fully into the promised lands you have for each and every single one. I declare that over their children, their grandchildren, that there would come a generational legacy. May grandma, may me, mom, papa, may they declare the name and the glory of Jesus Christ with that grandchild in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. May each of us continue to be given a hunger, a thirst for your word. And Lord, won't you grace us to walk in obedience to it in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, God bless you. Um, you can go to YouTube. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of messages. We'll have a, uh, a website again coming to you, a host of things. And I look forward to seeing you again, God willing, again. Amen.